Hello, AP Bio. Okay, so I'm going to talk about uh, engineering a plasmid and then taking an engineered plasmid and inserting it into a bacteria cell for the purpose of, for a specific purpose. And in this particular case, I want to talk about insulin production. So let's think about how that uh, insulin production might work. In times past, um, humans with people with diabetes were given uh, pig insulin and there was some cross reactivity, some problems with it. And now uh, type one diabetics are able to um, take human insulin because we have engineered bacteria to produce human insulin. And then the protein is um, harvested so that the insulin can be given to people with type one diabetes. Okay, so let's talk about how that would happen. Well, first of all, you need to have a human cell and you need to have a bacteria cell. So that's what we'll start with here, what we start with. And um, in both of those cells, there are chromosomes. So let's label those. These are the chromosomes. So the, the reason that insulin production works in this way is because DNA is the universal language. So chromosomes in human cells are speaking the same language that chromosomes in bacteria cells are speaking. So, uh, the other piece and the reason that it works is because in bacteria, we have mobile genetic elements. They're called plasmids. And this green right here is a plasmid. And this is a little mobile genetic element, which just means it can be moved around. And so we exploit that in the lab. So we'll, the first thing that has to happen is the gene of interest has to be isolated identified and isolated. So ins the insulin gene needs to be located in the human genome, and then it needs to be cut out of the genome using restriction enzymes. So now we've got restriction enzymes again, but now instead of fragmenting the DNA for DNA fingerprinting, we're looking for restriction sites around a gene of interest. So here we have to identify, so it has to be located, right? And uh, cut the gene of interest with a specific restriction enzyme. So obviously, uh, to identify it, you have to figure out where the restriction sites are and what the specific restriction sites are. So here's the gene of interest right here. After it's been cut out of the DNA um, using restriction enzymes. So say you have all these different restriction sites, you got to make sure you, you're using the, the proper restriction enzyme. So in this case, we're talking about insulin, the insulin gene. Now, the other thing that has to happen is that plasmids, little mobile elements, need to be isolated from bacteria cells. So here's a plasmid right here that's been isolated from the bacteria cell. You get a whole bunch of plasmids. Then you need to cut the plasmid with the same restriction enzyme now the reason is is that restriction enzymes when they cut will create what's called a sticky end and so this if we can imagine this is the dna right here what happens is depending on where it cuts it's going to leave the dna right here so say this is an a and this is a T, and this is a G, and this is a C, this has been cut out right here. So when you cut the DNA from um, both the gene of interest and the, the plasmid with the same restriction enzyme, then you can put it together. You can combine and join, combine the fragments, and then you can seal the DNA with uh, the same enzyme that that uh, cells use. So combine and combine the fragments and join with DNA ligase, just like uh, cells do when they take out the primers and then they seal uh, the DNA with DNA ligase. Okay, so now you've got an engineered plasmid. This is an engineered plasmid, also called recombinant DNA because it's been recombined. It's from two different sources. You got a human insulin gene in a bacterial plasmid. Then you have to culture bacteria. 
so that they're growing exponentially. We call it competent. I don't know why I really put that in quotes. It's just growing exponentially. So it's like adolescent bacteria. It's woo, growing like mad crazy. And then you incubate the bacteria with the recombinant plasmid. with the engineered plasmid and you subject it to certain protocols often a, a water bath a warm water bath with he, uh, heat shock and then on ice back and forth and then often with what's called transformation solution which is both of those um, procedures are designed, protocols are designed to loosen up the membrane of the bacteria so it takes in the, um, the exogenous DNA. That's called bacterial transformation. Then the some of the cells will take in the gene of interest and you can see here and here we've got the gene of interest the plasmid is inside those cells we call those transformed cells now the transformed cells are grown on a particular medium these are grown on oops on a selective media so that only the transformed cells grow only transformed cells grow as long as there's a reporter gene on the plasmid which there typically is so that's a a gene with that is going to select for only the transformed cells so it would be often is antibiotic um, resistance so you would put antibiotic resistance into those onto that uh, same engineered plasmid to make sure that you could select for only transformed cells because you don't want to grow cells that aren't that don't have uh, the uh, engineered plasmid then in uh, you when you culture those cells every time there's a new cell that's made it's going to have the engineered plasmid in it and so that we call those transformed cells and they will express the new phenotype. And then in the case of insulin, the protein can be harvested. So in this particular case, the, the these cells are gonna produce insulin. And so that's how we produce, that's how we have engineered bacteria cells to produce human insulin. And it's all because, we should put this at the star at the top, is because DNA is the universal language of all cells. Okay, that's it. That's how you uh, engineer a cell to express a new phenotype. And I hope that was helpful.